And welcome to Sanford Stadium in Athens, Georgia. They have been playing football here since the start of the Great Depression in 1929. And over the years, the capacity has grown from 30,000 to the fifth largest in the country, 92,746. Tonight, it's number 13, Tennessee, going between the hedges to face the 10th-ranked Bulldogs of Georgia. Walking out behind the big flag, they have lost one time this year. A heartbreaking loss to the University of Florida. And here come the dogs, undefeated, 12 and 22. Taylor. Parker wanted him to stay. He comes out. And smack down at the 16 yard line. With their proven After the guy. Play, dead ball, personal foul, number 28 on the receiving team. And it will be half the distance to the goal, first and 10. Eric Ames leads them out, hitting almost 70% of his passes this year. Poker, the tailback, standing inside his own one, and he'll get the carry. Nice blocking in front, and Poker up to about the 11-yard line. Let's take a look at the starting lineup presented by the U.S. Postal Service. Tennessee's offensive line has to run block well tonight. They cannot afford to be one-dimensional like they were against the University of Florida. Only one wide receiver. Poker and Anderson together in the backfield. Ainge, good play fake. Wants to go deep and it's overthrown. They had Meacham sandwiched. Georgia's defense has been able to get a pass rush from its front four solely. They'll certainly have to do it tonight to help that young secondary. And we talked about Johnson and Moses, two outstanding pass rushers. And that second down, averaging over 115 yards a game, that's third in the country as a wide receiver. They'll get a lot of attention tonight. Ain short toss, Meacham only picks up a yard, goes out of bounds on the punt. And the dangerous Mikey Henderson is deep. Line drive kick. Henderson at the 48. This guy is cat quick. And then he's buried at the 45. For Georgia's offense, someone in that receiving core needs to step up. Nobody on the roster has more than eight catches through five ball games. And I think the guy who will step up tonight is Mohamed Massaquad. Craig Lumpkin coming off his first career start as the tailback. Lumpkin gets the ball. Cuts to the outside and a nice, solid tackle. The Vols linebackers have made some big plays this year, and it is the only group that has not lost a star player to injury. They have really been hurt in that department. Teroshinsky goes to the shotgun at second and 11. Tennessee shows blitz and comes with it. Instead, it's a handoff to Lumpkin, and Lumpkin barrels his way down to the 25. Here's the senior changing the play. This is what they said right. is his best attribute. Pump fake. Tereshinsky deep down the sideline. And it's dropped. Could have been intercepted right in the hands. Lumpkin again tries to reverse his field. And he'll lose five yards. He's showing blitz. Joe T changing at the line of scrimmage. John Chavis loves to blitz in this kind of situation. Backs off. Comes with only four. Tereshinsky still under. But you can see how accurate he is. And he got him in the right play. Lumpkin again. They have blocked well against the Tennessee front so far. Got hurt early in the second game of this season after he had won the starting job. Waited his entire career to be the starter as a third-generation Georgia Bulldog. Lumpkin powers his way inside the five. They got that left side again, I think, if they want to run it that way. Tereshinsky tries the quarterback draw, then just throws it away. 
Here's Andy Bailey. Hasn't kicked since 2004. He is in there because Brandon Katu, the All-SEC kicker, is out. His first try in two years. And it's good. Aga and company up 3-0. They've had big games before. They have big games coming up. Those are sandwich games. Maybe they didn't pay attention the way they should have. Maybe. Big kick return from Marcus Coker. 40 yards. Coker stays in at tailback behind Ainge. Georgia shows nothing but that front four. They'll try to stop everything if they can. Ainge on second and six. Good protection. Throws high. Give me some happy hogs all week. They earned that one. Over the middle, Smith bobbled the ball. And he's going to be just shy of a... Be interesting how long they can go tonight. Here's a flanker screen, and Smith dropped it. And they did a great job this offseason regrouping for this year. Play fake up the middle goes Coker. Nice job by Ainge to... Arian Foster is in for the first time. He's number 27 in Tennessee's backfield. He'll get a carry. And there's the middle linebacker, Jarvis Jackson. Been friends many, many years and delighted to be back together. Here comes the blitz. Johnson up the middle. They'll go out in the flat, get a short completion to the tight end, Chris Brown. Ainge short set as they flooded the outside, and Smith will make the catch. Show the quarterback a good target. Ainge for the end zone. Smith, touchdown. Brett Smith with his second touchdown catch of the year, and Ainge made that drive look easy. Yes, he did. Had the coverage. Neither one was close. And the point after by Colquitt is good. Or Will Hoyt, excuse me. And Tennessee has struck back at Georgia after the Dogs get a field goal. The Vols get their first touchdown of the night, and they lead it 7-3. And then when the opportunity came to throw it down the field, he stuck it in there. And Smith could get a lot of action because of those... Other two wide receivers, the guys who uh, not be expected right. to cover a wide receiver. Tereshinsky out of the gun to Lumpkin in the flat. Gets a block out there, and Lumpkin will pick up a couple, for they sure are. Those opportunities don't come along very often. you got to make the most. Lumpkin again. Outstanding defense. Carl, the Holly Rowe doing her best. Dr. Jerry Punch imitation. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Tereshinsky with good time, down the middle, and caught! Yes, a caught, and he hung on! But what a hit by Morley as well. He's got it, hits the ground, the ball comes out. I think that play will stay as ruled on the field a catch. Boy, he was decleated. He came last week. Catch, first and ten. With Florida winning today, both these teams need to win to keep pace with the Florida Gators. And Tennessee has already lost to Florida. They can ill afford to lose another one right now. That's the fullback, Sutherland. Tereshinsky to a gun on second and 11. Instead gives it to Lumpkin. Here's the reverse. Bryant. Boy, Tennessee played that beautifully. Still playing very well. Miko Goodman, number 85, is in as an additional wide receiver. Bryant on a pass that's out of the he caught it. Caught it right in front of Jonathan Wade. That ball was three steps under throw. And a throw get the ball, then a defensive back does. Wade never able to get his feet under him, so he could jump. Lumpkin all the way inside the one. Just straight up the middle. Will they get the playoff before the clock runs out on the quarter? They do. Sutherland. <laughs> what a way for the home folks to end the first quarter. That's their defense. Bailey for the point after. 
He's made a field goal and an extra point in relief of the all-conference place kicker. Georgia back on top. In a seesaw game right from the beginning. Lucas Taylor. Ended as he got to the 22. And boy, was that a gaping hole. Ainge, good play fake. Brown, the tight end, will get only a couple. He's played well in this stadium, in this environment. The problems he had last year when he alternated a quarterback with Clawson. And that's Eric Ainge knowing that the job is his and he doesn't have to look over his shoulder in any situation. Arian Foster gets a crack at tailback, picks up maybe one. On a turning second quarter clock in front of almost 93,000 people here in Athens. Ainge dumps it off, dropped by Cotton, the tight end. Ainge, plenty of time, almost intercepted. <laughs> almost intercepted twice. Yeah. Cold quit to punt. Mikey Henderson, who has one touchdown return this year, and another one that he squandered. Look out. Look Mikey out. likes it. How about the block on the punter? 85 yards. That time. He didn't lose possession of the ball before. Wow, that's a miss. Point Not after down, is though. shanked left. Let's see what the marker is. Offsides, number 20 on the defense. Taylor will be half the distance to the goal. Replay the try. Oh, goodness. Lined that one through. Barely made it, but it did. Well, we've seen some shaky kicking this weekend all over the country, but that wasn't a shaky return. Mikey Henderson with a beauty. Last year a punt return, this year a punt return. Taylor and Coker are deep for Tennessee. Coker. Didn't make the 20. Colquitt ended up with Brown in a headlock. And now Tennessee wants to get back to the ground. That ball okay. came loose. I oh think they're going to say that was oh, down. They are. It looks like they are marking him down. It looked like the knee was clearly down. So hard to see. And Tony Taylor hit him. Now the problem is because this was ruled down and not a fumble, it is not a reviewable play. So he was called down. And even if it looks like a fumble, they can't review that play. Looked like a good call, though. Smith, again, very busy tonight. Well, that was a weird play right there. Yeah. Look what this Georgia defense gives you. They don't like to give up big plays. You must be patient and execute. There's enough to get the first down. Here comes the blitz. Ainge crushed by battle. Oh, you'd expect him to be smart. He's a chemistry major. <laughs> Draw play, Coker. Flag is down, so is Coker at the 24 for the Personal Volunteers. Foul. Face mask number 54 on the offense. The penalty is declined. Crowd is going nuts. Georgia comes with three. Coker out in the flat, and look at the red jersey swarm. That's why he's laying down and turned away. Here's Mikey, not this time, taking it down at the 18-yard line. He has told us that it means so much to him. He knows the great tradition that goes with, along with playing it with the Bulldogs. Thomas Brown, big run down the sideline, and Brown. Georgia, in passing, is only 90th in the country. So Tennessee needs to stop the run, and right now they can't do it. Brown again, dragging tacklers with him to the 49. Even as a quarterback starter contender, he was on the pump protection teams. He just wanted to do anything he could. Brown, again! Nice cutback. 
And you know what? Back in the eye. Brown again. Good stiff arm. Plows inside the 40. And they're doing it the right way, taking one game at a time. Everybody talked about how tough that four-game stretch is. Two down, two to go. Yep. Tereshinsky. All day to throw. Deep down the sideline. Out of control. Picked off by his fullback, Sutherland. Somehow Sutherland comes down with the football. Good coverage, but Jonathan Wade just misplayed the ball, and Sutherland came up with a big catch. Todd, guys are making plays they for They are, him. absolutely are. Brown. Nowhere to go this time. Sutherland and Brown are the men in the eye. Brown behind the fullback. Seen a lot of two tight end look. Another two tight end set. Third and six. Tereshinsky wants to throw out in the flat. Sutherland down. Touchdown. This guy, all he does is make touchdowns. Yes, Sutherland. sir. <laughs> and all Tereshinsky does is complete passes. Huh. And they do. Georgia stunning Tennessee. They're up 24 to 7. Taylor and Coker are deep. Wow. And that's kicked out of bounds. Now can Tennessee respond in front of Almost 93,000 hostile fans. Meacham flankers screen. Check in with Reese. Reese, that's that's unbelievable. Ainge pump fake being chased. Got rid of it to Coker. Boy, nice play by Eric Ainge. And look sure like Georgia may have been offside. Ainge with a free play. Coker. Blockers in front. Nice cut back inside the 30. And on this All offense. Size, number 99 on the defense. The penalty will be declined. Tennessee driving. They have reached the Georgia 29-yard line. Under three and a half minutes to go in the half. Ains draw play. Coker. Oh, great nice cut pass. by Coker. Holy cow. He makes you play the run legitimately. That helps the passing game. Ainge, play action, floats it toward the end zone and too far. Intended for Meacham. Coker. And one thing about that last play. I think they've run the ball well enough in this game so far to take a shot here. I think it's a smart call. And a quarterback keeper, that should be good enough for the first down. Got Taylor and Smith over here, both in the slot. Want a screen to Coker. Boy, and Georgia defense did beautifully down to the 15. Let me see in a bit. All right, Reese Coker straight up the middle. They need to reach the nine for a first down. Foster is in at tailback on third down and three. Ainge out in the flat has a first down to Smith, and Smith tries to stay in bounds. Got down to the one. Goal line situation. Foster, no oh. signal now, there is touchdown, Tennessee. Boy, he stuck that ball out. He was stopped on his initial movement and alertly stuck that ball out. Will Hoyt for the point after. It's a huge drive for Absolutely. Tennessee. They were down 24 to 7, and they've cut it to 10. They'll let that one go out of the end zone, and Georgia will have the ball. And they had 22 drives the last two weeks with only four scores. So much different offense tonight for Georgia. Clock is running, and so is Thomas Brown. 24-14, Georgia pleasing this huge home crowd. They have played exceptional football. 24-14 at the half. Now let's join Reese Davis for the Pontiac Performance Halftime Report. And the Bulldogs will get the ball to start the third period. Wow, great cover.
coverage. And he has been everything that Mark Rick wanted him to be in this game in the first half. It's a danger zone right here for Georgia. They start at their own six-yard line. Lumpkin, who has run very, very well tonight, across the 10 to the 11-yard line. With a second and short. Well, you can't replace guys like Harrell. Tereshinsky, that one is tapped and intercepted by Stewart. Huge play. <laughs> Who moved to corner after Inky Johnson was hurt. So he's done a tremendous job over there. Now they go to Coker and Coker down to the 14 yard. Ains may be changing the play. Straight back to throw. Quickly underneath to Meacham. Meacham has a first down. Drives inside the 10 to the 7 yard line. Ains floats it to the end zone. Incomplete. Nearly intercepted. If Oliver... Swain comes back and sets up on the wing. Oliver. Or rather, Coker on the draw. And third and goal. Moving, Moving up front. Dead it, ball. False start. Number 54 on the offense. Five-yard penalty. It remains third down. Coker is out here as a flanker. Five wide receiver set up. Blitz coming. Ainge over the middle incomplete. There's some contact there, and it's going to be an interference call. Pass interference, number 25 on the defense. The penalty will be enforced at the two-yard line, first and goal. Coker is the deep man. Anderson, the fullback. Ainge floats it. Incomplete. Oh, Flags everywhere. There were two fouls. Holding, number 12 on the defense. That penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal. It will be a first down. And now first down right on the one-yard line. Quarterback keeper by Ainge, and the big quarterback's in there for the touchdown. <laughs> the shift in momentum goes to Tennessee. Transformation that Ainge has gone under. Will Hoyt knocks the extra point through. Tennessee has scored two touchdowns in the last 4 3 and they're back within a field goal here in Athens, Georgia. Over gets the touchdown. And we have a three-point ball game. Thomas Brown runs up on the kickoff to the eight. That's twice they've pinned him on the sidelines. Thomas Brown has averaged over 26 yards a kickoff and not let him get his hands up in the air. That was a huge play for the Tennessee defense. This is where Georgia started the last time, and it cost him. Not this time. Lumpkin. Boy, he's run hard. And now a flag. After the play, dead ball, personal foul, grabbing the face pass by the running back. Number six, that penalty will be half the distance to the goal second down. That moves him back to the eighth. Lumpkin again, this time not much. Fights forward to the 12. A.J. Bryant is in as an additional wide receiver. He's flanked to the top of the screen. Tereshinsky in trouble. Throws downfield. There's a flag and drop Massaquois. Holding number 24 of the defense. That penalty will be 10 yards from the previous spot, an automatic first down. They get a fresh set of downs from their own 22, out of the shadow of their own goalpost. Pressure coming, Tereshinsky throws, and throws a complete bullet to Kenneth Harris. That's his first catch. He's the guy who has led the, that defensive line in tackles all year. Lumpkin again, a little stutter step. Right on the inside where McBride came out. Sutherland back in there at the fullback spot. And he'll get the carry. Nice the big call. guy barrels to the 45. What a nice call. They don't see the ball very often. <laughs> That's right. He'll get it again. Same thing, other side. Some of those guys, they haven't been full speed, but guys looks like they are tonight. All right, Holly, they certainly are. They're stepped up big. Lumpkin behind Sutherland. I bet he doesn't grab the face mask this time. No, he didn't. Forced out of back. Lumpkin now averaging over seven yards a carry.
Gets another crack at it. Tries to get outside. Not this time. Yeah, nice play. Second and 13 after the loss. Karashinsky under pressure. Somehow got rid of it, and Sutherland made the catch. Slipped one tackle. But look at the swarm. Good ball fake by Tereshinsky, intended for Lumpkin. Incomplete. Andy Bailey, a Tennessee native, has hit one from 22. This is from 34. And he got it. Filling in for Brandon Katu. He'll do the place kicking job the rest of the year because Katu tore up his hamstring. So Bailey will have to do the heavy lifting for the rest of the season. And he connects on this one. Georgia has some breathing room at home against Tennessee. Coker and Taylor are deep. Coker runs up, has to take it on the bounce. Flag is down, so is Coker. During the return, illegal block in the back. Number 15 on the receiving team. Half the distance to the goal, first and 10. Big series for the Georgia defense right now. A chance to really flip the field. Ball's on the ground. And it looks like Tennessee got it back. Aims to his goal line. Third and 13. Aims from his end zone. Wow. Over the middle, that's a big play for a first down. Perfectly dropped in there to meet him. That was pretty to watch. Yep. Shows the maturity of Eric Ainge. Here comes pressure. It's a screen. Coker. Or Foster, a nice cut to get a couple of more yards. Second and three. Foster again picks his way across the 35 to about the 36. Ainge goes to the gun. Short set, quick pass to Meacham. Avoids a tackler to the 40, to the 35-yard line. Well, that's what makes him so dangerous. Six for 78 tonight. There's a Kentucky red zone alert against South Carolina, if you're interested in that one. Foster breaks a tackle. Hard run down to the 25-yard line. If Steve Spurrier had any eligibility left, he'd have been in on that play. It took so long. Ames batted down. Charles Johnson got he's a lot quicker. He said last season he led the team in loafs. Not this year. Four-man rush. Ainge with time. Throws underneath. Not much. Third down success against third down success. Strength against strength. Big play here on third and six. Ainge, pressure coming. Watch the screen. And then has to desperate throw over the middle. Veteran kicker who has missed only once this year from 42 yards. And he's made 14 of his last 15 going back to last season. This is the 37-yard try to cut it to three. Perfect. Will Hoyt comes through, and we have a three-point ball game again. Playing that game, they're a very good football team. Tereshinsky changing the play. He's been very successful in this situation so far tonight. And one of the things that they thought was the key, the good situation the Bulldogs have. It's highly unusual to have three guys as they get five. Ball start, number 67 on the offense. Five-yard penalty, still second down. Coaching the three guys that have started this season. So he knows how this works. Good protection for Tereshinsky. And he gets the completion to Milner. Must stay on top of that. Martrez Milner took a shot right in the thigh on that last play. Tereshinsky on third down. It's intercepted. What a pick. What a catch by Jonathan Wade. And Tennessee has a chance to tie or take the lead. And Ainge wants to go for the throat. 
to the sideline and Meacham comes down hard. Evans with excellent coverage. It's a big weapon to have on the sideline. Ainge again with all day to throw. Got it to Smith, who has had a huge night. And Smith has a first down. Smith now with a 100-yard night. And we have reached the end of the third quarter of a three-point game. They've thrown it 30 times. They've run it 20. Georgia can't get to the quarterback. Coker. Well, they got to him for maybe a loss of a yard. Because he is a hot quarterback who has had too much time to find open men in the passing game tonight. Ains with time. One more time. Wide open. Meets him. Touchdown. one of the leading receivers in the nation get that open about how important it would be for Georgia to get pressure from its front four they did a pretty good job very early in the game not lately they've not been able to get to Ainge and he burned them that time He just looks so different than he looked last year. I mean, David Cutcliffe has done a wonderful job with him. Hasn't he? And the kid has made a commitment as well. Morley from the three. Only to the 16. They're backed up inside their own 10. In the second half, their average starting spot has been the 11. Kentucky's better this year, that's for sure. Yes, we they saw are. them earlier. They're better than they were a year ago. Georgia desperate to get something started on offense now in Tennessee's defense. We're going to cut loose on third and eight here as Tereshinsky goes back to his goal line, throws to the sideline, a lot of contact. They're saying it was an uncatchable pass. High snap. And it's blocked. Live ball in the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee. They had two blocked last week at Ole Miss. A high snap. Pressure off the edge. After having to go up and get that high snap, he was very casual about it. And it cost him. Tennessee has exploded. 31 points in less than 18 minutes. to swing momentum even further their way. Five penalties, two turnovers, a block, punt, and 24 points given up in the second half for Georgia. Everything had just come apart at the seams. There goes Thomas Brown. Look out! Are Are you kiss? Holy cow! 100 yards! Massaqua in motion. Looking his way, Tereshinsky now throws right between receivers. The closest man to it was Miller. Took off straight off the field and never broke stride. Nobody even got a good shot on him. After a great night of covering kicks, that was a poor job by Tennessee. Had to encourage his former teammates on. Tennessee trying to answer. Coker, look at this. Got another blocked in hit from behind out to the 45-yard line. This is already the highest-scoring Tennessee-Georgia game ever. And they've been playing forever. Foster. Tennessee still not really able to run. Sports Center as soon as you guys are done. Ainge back to throw. Plenty of time. Got it to Smith again. What a huge night he's had. Yep. And as you'll be able to see on the replay, the ball is bobbled, but was it caught first? Brett Smith bobbling it all the way, and then it popped out by Brandon. After review, video evidence shows that the receiver never controlled the ball. Therefore, we have an
Tennessee wants to drive again the way they have been doing the entire second half. Can they keep the drive alive? Four-man rush. Ainge finally pressured. Throws on the run. Complete Meacham. What a great job by Eric Ainge. And then Meacham is hit out of bounds. Coming in, the best in the conference at converting third down. That was a huge one there. They have made tremendous plays in the second half. And Ainge has just been sensational. Now they go to the tight end, Chris Brown. And Ainge is thrown for 224 of those yards on 22 of 34 passes. Foster, big hole up the middle. Foster down to the 24. They've only run for some success, but they've done a great job of protecting the quarterback, and Eric's been hot. Ainge under a little pressure this time, throws down to the five, Smith! Wow. Dives, and they're saying he's short. About a foot from the goal line. First and goal. Ainge, quarterback keeper, no signal yet. Foster is the tailback. He'll get it. Flag is down as Foster dives into the end zone. Now we'll check the marker. Offside, number 90 on the defense. The penalty is declined. Touchdown. They are. And it's 44 to 33. People that tuned into this one will think we're in overtime. We're not. It's still the fourth quarter. I missed that. Boy. I mean, how many missed extra points can you see in a weekend? Back to Georgia after this. A sharp throw the football. Here's Thomas Brown. They're going to avoid him with a short pooch kick because he went 100 yards the last time he touched it. Lumpkin the tailback behind Tereshinsky. They want to scream, but Lumpkin has no chance because Wade, the corner, has got all the skills. As you take a look at Joe T's numbers, much more affected that first half. This one is behind Massaqua. Well, we've not seen him yet. If they don't get anything in this drive, we might see him in the last series, or the next series, I should say. Four-man rush. Tereshinsky with time. Being hounded. Throws. Complete. Great throw. What a job by Tereshinsky. Finally found A.J. Bryant. The third-generation Bulldog trying to lead his team from behind. Under pressure again. That's Knocked away, loose ball. Tennessee. Marvin Mitchell, the middle linebacker, came on a blitz. Knocked it away. The recovery made by Gerard Mayo. Ball is knocked loose before his hand comes forward. After review, video evidence supports the call on the field. It was a fumble. It will be first and ten for Tennessee. And they were able to bounce back from that heartbreaking loss. And they are playing better football now than they were in September. Foster is the tailback in this series. Tennessee would just like to work on the clock. And Georgia has not been able to generate pressure with their front four the way they have all season against Tennessee. Haynes wants to throw underneath to Cottom, and the tight end will have a first down before he goes out of bounds. Very similar to the way they did it when Peyton Manning was a senior back in 1997. And that's because of David Cutcliffe, the then and now offensive coordinator. But for the most part, Tennessee has done their damage throwing the football. Was Peyton Manning fun to watch? Mm -hmm. Still is. I mean, the most prepared. And learned how to trust Cutcliffe. Boy, it's really worked. Ainge, plenty of time to set in the flat. That's incomplete one. He's quick in the in this setups, the way Peyton and Eli were. Keeps that ball high. Inside the 10, the ball came loose. When the receiver hit the ground, that was Lucas Taylor. And he was popped by Tony Taylor. But certainly Tennessee's resiliency and their ability to come back in a tough situation on the road is not in question at all. No. Foster inside the five. That touchdown right before halftime 
really gave them uh, a charge for the rest of this game. Second and goal. Look at all the time they have eaten off the clock. Foster down near the one. But over 10 years since they gave up 50, and that was to the hated Steve Spurrier when he was in Florida. Foster to the outside, dives for the goal line, touchdown! Right in front of the linesman, he extended that arm and got the ball over the plane to the goal line. They have really ground down Georgia, and whether they scored or not on this drive, they've taken so much time off. Now that's a touchdown. I stand corrected. He got the ball out there. After review, video evidence supports the call on the field. Touchdown. Brutal stretch, and we will see them next Saturday night at Auburn. What a game that ought to be. They yeah, I mean, just tremendous. I guess Tennessee did run for 106. They've run for tonight. So just enough to make them be honest. And they're going to make sure. Well, good for Jim Leland. The, the Detroit Tigers had a great year, and they get to keep playing. Didn't he do a super job? And the party at the Steinbrenner house is going to be a little... Big-time recruit, and he is blasted as he got... And Matthew Stafford, the three of them, uh, very, very highly recruited guys, all in the same league. Yeah, supposedly the top three quarterback recruits in the country, they all end up in the Southeastern Conference. One of the leaders on Florida's team is a true freshman. Proved this afternoon he threw a jump pass. <laughs> he looked like he was double clutching in the lane. Percentage, but the turnovers, two interceptions and a fumble, really did the team in. And there's another Stafford turnover. got picked on the tip, and it's intercepted by Hefney. That is his third pick of the year. The defense created the turnovers, and the offense took advantage and moved the football. And now Tennessee has no goal but to run out the clock. Well, this is going to be hard to swallow for the Georgia faithful. They were so hopeful coming into this game. And accountability and uh, things that Mark Richt has done here at Georgia as well. And, well, it's just it's great to come on the road and get a win like this for Philip Palmer of Tennessee. Great poise. It's a huge win for Tennessee. Hats off to the balls who came in here, were dominated physically in the first half, found a way to get a late score, and then came back in the second half and just turned everything around. Final score, Tennessee 51, Georgia 33, the highest scoring game ever in this series. Sports Center coming up next.